श्री स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय अक्षर पुरुषोत्तम महाराज नी जय राधा कृष्ण देव नी जय सियावर रामचंद्र भगवान नी जय उमापति महादेव नी जय भगत जी महाराज नी जय शास्त्री जी महाराज नी जय योगी जी महाराज नी जय प्रमुख स्वामी महाराज नी जय महंत स्वामी महाराज नी जय प्रमुख स्वामी महाराज शताब्दी महोत्सव नी जय हे धाम की यो कहूँ काम की यो जग नाम की यो जस व्यापर यो है हे दान की यो सन मान की यो अभिमान की यो कर के झुकी यो है हे दाव की यो बहु भाव की यो ठहराव की यो कहु राज लियो है ब्रह्म मुनि गण शाम के आश्रय जो न कियो तो कछु न कियो है ए जाग करियो पुण्य भाग करियो सब त्याग करियो कहु राग धरियो है ए न्यास करियो उपवास करियो वनवास करियो तहा प्यास मरियो है ए जाप करियो सुर थाप करियो सुविलाप करियो तन ताप परियो है ब्रह्म मुनि गण शाम के आशय जो न करियो तो कछु न करियो है ब्रह्म मुनि गण शाम के आशय जो न करियो तो कछु न करियो है वेलकम टू दिस वीक्स एपिसोड ऑफ टाइमलेस हिंदू विजडम Duryodhan lamented that though he knew dharma he could not practice it and that he knew what was against dharma but he could not stop himself from succumbing to it if he did know his flaws he did nothing to counter them his father dhritarashtra enjoyed listening to his wise brother speak about dharma and yet he was totally complicit in all of his son's misdeeds Emperor Yudhishthir was different. Dharma was central to his identity. He was widely praised for it. He made unconscionable sacrifices for it. Through it all, he had accomplished impossible goals. And yet, though he fought and won on the side of justice, he could not win peace of mind. He could not conquer self-doubt. He could not overcome his fear and anxiety. over karma and personal deficiencies today we will examine the circumstances surrounding arjun's unique courage and bravery to do that we shall refer to one of hinduism's most revered texts the shrimad bhagavad gita a shastra within the mahabharat prior to the war ved vyas ji visited king dhritarashtra and offered him a yogic vision so that he may see in his mind everything that happened on the battlefield fearful of what he may see dhritarashtra requested that his charioteer sanjay be given this vision with his new found ability sanjay provided his king with real time reports of everything regarding the war perhaps the first example of play by play commentary their dialogue takes us right to the beginning of the shrimad bhagavad gita In chapter 1 verse 1 Dhritarashtra asks Sanjay to describe the scene on the battleground of Kurukshetra where the opposing armies had assembled preparing for war After a very brief overview of the main heroes Sanjay is drawn to Arjun and Krishna and the sacred conversation they share Their dialogue is the feature presentation in the Shrimad Bhagavad Gita The dialogue between Arjun and krishna a disciple and his guru a devotee and god this conversation catalyzed arjun's incredible transformation from a worldly man facing destiny on his own to a transcendent hero fearless focused 
and unhindered. Arjun's first words in the Gita are a request to Krishna to drive his chariot to the middle of the battlefield where Arjun could get a good look at those who had come to support the evil Duryodhan and fight him. Arjun had an ideal genetic makeup, a privileged upbringing, and a loving family. He had leveraged this with his focus and work ethic. He was loyal, intelligent, charming, and honorable. He was compassionate and charitable. He was incredibly strong and skilled. He was an ideal student, statesman, and warrior. Arjun had it all, and he had trained himself for the moment he was about to encounter. But everything he had done to become great and ready was a reinforcement of his identity as a human. All of the knowledge he had built from his experience disregarded his true identity as the Atma, in whom the Paramatma resides. Because of this, the highest ideals he could strive for were human ones. And on that battlefield, where now there were so many clashing destinies and so much moral ambiguity, Arjun's worldly attachment responded by shutting him down mentally and physically. In an instant, Arjun lost his will and became an emotional wreck he went on an increasingly nonsensical rant against fighting this war until at the end of chapter one, Arjun cast aside his weapons, sat down in his chariot, and decided not to fight. At the beginning of chapter two, Krishna sees Arjun overcome with grief, tears welling up in his eyes. Krishna asked Arjun, how he had allowed such impurities to pollute his mind with thoughts that would destroy his legacy. He demanded that Arjun stop this degrading impotence as it was unbecoming of him. He commanded him to give up this weakness of the heart, addressing Arjun as one who punishes his enemies. Arjun was distraught, sure, Everything that had happened over the last few decades had made this war inevitable. He knew that, but he couldn't see past the grief it was causing him. He expressed this confusion, and then Arjun did something that should have occurred to him earlier, but as many of us may have already experienced, it took him pain and suffering to get to the point he needed to. What did Arjun do? Well. In the seventh verse of the second chapter, Arjun prayed. Karpanya dosho pahata svabhava Pruchami tvam dharma sammudha cheta Yachre yahasyanis chitam bruhi tanme Shishyasteham Shadhimam Tvam Prapannam Arjun says that cowardice has degraded my nature. Ignorance has degraded my understanding of Dharma. I ask you, tell me what is most certainly best for me. I am your disciple, surrendered unto you. Please instruct me. Yes, Arjun prayed. And what a prayer it was. God's priority with regards to a devotee is to grant the devotee mukti, or freedom from pain and misery, freedom from maya, freedom from ignorance. God's main tool for granting this freedom is gnan. Without gnan, or functional spiritual wisdom of the highest order, there is no freedom. Although God wishes to grant this mukti, or freedom, he can only do so if the devotee chooses it. Now, philosophers can write and debate about the implication this has on God's power. But the way God has set it up, in order for a soul to be granted mukti or freedom, the soul must choose mukti and decline all other things. 
Arjun did not ask for Krishna to fight this war for him or to get rid of everything that made him uncomfortable. Arjun knew that Krishna knew what was best. And so he simply asked, what should I do? Whether he knew it or not, this was the beginning of Arjun's choice for Gnan, for Mukti. Proper words can be learned, they can be memorized and recited. However, they only carry meaning if the intent behind those words is authentic and pure. Arjun's expression of surrender can be viewed as authentic because Arjun stopped trying to rationalize his choice and admitted to the same flaws that Krishna had just pointed out that he was a coward, that his understanding of dharma had become delusional. He didn't make excuses for his cowardice. He didn't deflect the criticism. He didn't mask it or deny it in any way. This aspect of Arjun's prayer deserves a lot more time than we can give today. But in short, it is what justified Krishna's love for Arjun. Arjun showed his trust in Krishna by admitting to flaws that a warrior would never admit to. He did not doubt Krishna's compassion. He did not fear judgment from Krishna as human beings fear judgment from each other. He saw Krishna as divine, as worthy of his complete and utter honesty, someone in whom he could put complete trust in. Sadhguru Premanan Swami has written a beautiful prayer that echoes a similar sentiment to Arjun's. मैं हूँ कपटी कुशील कुटिलनी मैं हूँ कपटी कुशील कुटिलनी दोष पिया जी मेरो दिल उन लावना दोष पिया जी मेरो दिल उन लावना बिखम युजार में हूँ तो अकेली बिखम युजार में हूँ तो अकेली तुम भी न और शरण नहीं पावना तुम भी न और शरण नहीं पावना ओ साथी मेरो नेहनी भावना अवगुण जानी तजो पिया मोबत अवगुण जानी तजो पिया मोबत कोटि कल्प मेरो अंत उन आवना Koti kalp mero ant unayavana <coughs> Prema sakhi sharan tum samarath Prema sakhi sharan tum samarath Patit pavan tero naam nal javana पतित पावन तेरो नाम नल जावना हो साथीड़ा मेरो नेहनी भावना हो साथीड़ा मेरो नेहनी भावना And so even though after this epic prayer Arjun said he wouldn't fight Krishna smiled. After all, Arjun had chosen the path of Gnan. Thus, Krishna began the most talked about episode of timeless Hindu wisdom. Even as Sanjay watched from home, broadcasting to an audience of one, all the way through. Though it seemed as though Krishna was detailing numerous aspects of spiritual endeavor, in truth, Krishna spoke on one topic the mastery of yoga with Bhagwan, with God. Arjun was in awe. He asked many questions along the way. Krishna had seemingly embodied a new spirit to deliver this message, 
not only to Arjun, but seemingly to all of mankind. At one point, Krishna even fulfilled Arjun's desire to behold his unearthly supernatural form. Now, this event was meant to be exclusively for Arjun, but as we said, Sanjay was also watching, and so he got to see it as well. Overwhelmed with emotion, he did his best to relay his feelings to Dhritarashtra, who instantly regretted his decision to pass on the vision that would have allowed him this experience. Quick side note, if you are going to pass on something, be sure to have a better reason than the fact that it might make you a little uncomfortable. Anyways, moving on. When we get to the 18th chapter, Krishna began to see the signs that his message had shifted Arjun's attention from the subjective reality he had previously immersed himself in to an objective reality that he was now longing to know. Krishna tells Arjun, he prepares Arjun by announcing his intention to share with him the essence of all he had said thus far. Manmanabhava madbhakto madhyaji maam namaskuru maame vaishyasi satyam te pratijane priyosi me sarva dharman parityaja maamekam sharanam vraja Aham tva sarva pape bhyo moksha ishyami ma shuchaha. With these verses, Krishna cements the importance of prayer, complete surrender, and acceptance of God's protection as the essence of all that he had taught to Arjuna. Krishna's final words to Arjun were in the form of questions. Had he listened with an attentive mind? Had his, delus had his delusions been dispelled? This, this wasn't just your English teacher asking if you were paying attention in class. This was Krishna. After he had just made you witness to his supernatural wisdom and form, a lesser man would not have known how to respond. Arjun, however, was now infused with a purpose much greater than the war he was about to win on the side. And so he responds to Krishna. Nashto moha smrutir labdha Tvat prasadan mayachuta Sito smigat sandeha with humility and confidence, all at once, Arjun said, My delusions have been dispelled. O Krishna, by your grace, my faculties have been restored. I am of stable mind, and my doubts have been cleared. I shall execute your command. Outwardly, nothing had changed. The war was still at hand. The opposition was still the same. But now, Arjun was armed with something many of us don't even realize we need. He had clarity. He was able to see things as they were simply by committing himself to Krishna. He was now full of confidence. Not only was God on his side, but he too had chosen to be on God's side. Let's go back to another prayer by Sadhguru Premanan Swami. Kesariya mane 
रख जो राज रो गुलाम माने रख जो राज रो गुलाम चरण पनिया ग्रह कर आगे उभो रहू आठ हो जा आगे उभो रहू आठ हो जा रख जो राज रो गुलाम माने रख जो राज रो गुलाम ज्यू राज री जो त्यू ही करूंगो ज्यू राज री जो त्यू ही करूंगो करी छल कपट हरा करी छल कपट हरा प्रेमानंद ने रावल जानो प्रेमानंद ने रावल जानो सब विधि पूरण का केसरिया माने रख जो राज रो गुलाम माने रख जो राज रो गुलाम माने रख जो राज रो गुलाम मे वी ऑल चूज द ऑपरचुनिटी फॉर ज्ञान एंड मुक्ति अबव ऑल एल्स मे वी ऑल ऑफर आवर फेथ एंड सरेंडर to our guru who connects us with god just as arjun had and may we all experience the confidence that comes from such a noble commitment namaste jay swaminarayan